Beautiful day to you. This is Ron Janish with andrewscourse.com. We're going to go over a number of things, and some of the stuff is, is a repeat of what I've said in previous videos, but there is a substantial amount of new material in this one here. So uh, stick around and listen for it. Anyway, uh, give you a little history. What we did earlier this year was we tested out a system on uh, two hour intraday system on two hour and we came this was not it but it's very similar to this and the we came out with some really incredible results and uh, we decided to improve it so now mind you this is a system that we only tested out on futures 37 futures and we came up with uh, a, a good percentage of winners it was over in the, in the futures we decided to keep it with, we had like 70, 80% winners or something pretty good. And then we said, well, how can we improve this? Well, first of all, we said, well, let's keep this system, but let's try it out on a different time theme. And so we did it on four hour and that seemed to work reasonably well. And so we did it on the four hour and, you know, in over a two year period, there's probably a thousand some odd trades. In, in 37 different futures. So these are these are intraday, right? So that's a lot of trades. And it's important when you're checking out a mechanical system uh, to, to have a really good number of trades. And this is an exceptionally high number. So we, we went with that. And this, for example, we had, so we had all these trades and we looked at it and said, well, how can we improve it? Right. We keep saying that. There's this, this mantra around the office here. Constant, never-ending improvement. Right? Can I, as Anthony Robbins used to call it. Anyway, so what we did was we put it, we looked at the daily charts of these intraday trades, and we put them into four different categories. And you can see here we have four different, effectively four different categories in this column right here. Okay. And so we did that. And this is the, only the British pound and the Canadian dollar you're looking at here. Mind you, we did 37 altogether, and this is only two of them. And so we looked at this and we said, well, you know, if we just press the button and kind of put this in alphabetical order, what happens is kind of magical. Okay, so the, these four categories, what do we come up with? Well, look at this. Notice that. The opsos were oh just fantastic losers. All right, look at all this red right here. Ah, absolutely excellent losers. So we'll put these in category D for a dismal. And mind you, these these opsos, uh, uh, when we when we looked at all the 37, it, it was consistent. These were dismal all the way around. And you know, when you're looking when you're developing a trading system, you have to be be willing to look at What's dismal? Not that you want to trade it, but it's good to know. Okay, so what's dismal? Okay, so we gave that category D. Then we found these here, and we found these here were eh, a little bit better, but uh, they, they were pretty crummy. So we made them category C. Okay, and then we found that these ones here were eh, pretty much better than average. Right here, you can see these. And... Uh, so we gave those, gave that the label of category B, and uh, then what happened was we gave these here, these guys in the middle from here to here, these OZs, we gave these here category A, because if you look at it on a percentage basis, uh, they're pretty close to amazing in terms of how many uh, percentage wins. So. And compared to these other dismal things and crummy things anyway. So we, we did that and that, that worked out okay. And then we looked at, well, what happens if we don't take category C and category D trades? Well, we, what did we do here? Here we, here, okay, here we did a, uh, where's the running total? Uh, it's here somewhere. Anyway, so what happened? Yeah, these are negative numbers. So, 
So what we found was, was when we excluded category C and category D trades, we uh, not only excluded a lot of losers, but we increased the average profit per trade. We increased the total win of the system and all that good kind of stuff. And so, oh, well, that was neat. And so all we really had left was category B, B and category A right here, these guys here, right? And, and that, that seemed to work really well. Well, and then time went on. See, when you're building a trading system, uh, things happen. Let me show you. Let's see. No, that's not it. Let's see if we can find it. No, no, no. That's not it. Let's see, where am I looking for this? Um, oh yeah, I know where I'm looking for this. Let's hold on. Uh, don't mind this nonsense here. This is research I was doing, which didn't work out in that account. Uh, let's see, so um, what you do is, is you go to here there we go. So along came November 23rd. Now, if you remember around November 23rd was this was after the election and and there was this push and pull and tug between Trump and Biden and, and Trump saying, ah, I won and Trump, Biden going, I don't think so. And so all of a sudden, 11:23, we have this experience here. Right. Absolutely horrible. Whole shitload of losing trades. Well, if, as we looked at it, it said, well, this was an AZ. Well, we don't take that because that's category C. We don't take, here's another AZ trade. So we, we didn't take that. And these are all, all four of these are category AZ and we don't take those. Okay. And so the, what was left was these here, which were all category B and one category A. And I said, Jesus, all these losers in category B, what's going on? So we looked at it and said, well, need to make a little modification here. Uh, is there something that's going on with these category B trades that we would have that many losers at one time? And, and so we, we, looked, we looked at applying a concept, standard course concept that I've said many, many a time with trades that I have labeled as SO trades. So those of you that have taken the course know exactly what that is and that's no big deal. And so you apply this other concept along with it and then all of a sudden they are top of the line. You get rid of nearly every one of these losers and a whole bunch more. Actually, you get rid of uh, nearly uh, half or so of the SO trades, but that's okay because if we can increase the percentage profitable, that's a good thing, especially when we still left with a system that has hundreds of trades every year, right? So we did that and then, you know, life goes on and, and you see here, we went through here and these ones here did not have fire exit in front of them. The only one that was a fire exit, let's see, which is also known as a losing trade, was this AZ here. And remember, we don't trade the AZs because they're category C, right? So, uh, and but these other ones, these were all winners. G, when we say, G, when we put a letter G here, that means it hit the GELT line. GELT, German means money, made money. So, um, and G plus means it closed beyond it and all that good kind of stuff. So, so we were able to get back onto success with that, right? Okay. So in other words, we took this concept originally and then added a few things to it, like I discussed, and this is the progress that we've made. And as a result, we are, our average trade historically now, not historically, uh, meaning uh, the theoretical model, right? Uh, is up to very close to 90%. And that's pretty darn good. Because okay. remember, we're doing futures and futures are just risky, theoretically. So uh, you want to keep that in mind. 
So here's what else has been going on. We have recently run across a something that I set up years ago, and that was the Andrews Babson Google Group. So if you go to Google Groups and you look for Andrews Babson, those two words together, uh, I think there's a dash mark in between. Uh, that's a that's an ongoing Google group that we have where we uh, send out information every once in a while. Now, there's something else that somebody has turned me on to that I'll share with you that is kind of fun. Um, here we have what's known as uh, this is this is uh, this is called Discord, D-I-S-C-O-R-D. And this particular group is known as San Diego Traders Group. And as you can see, I'm in it. And what happens here is, is that different people post different things in terms of trades. And for example, last night I posted uh, uh, my buy, uh, before it happened, my buy stop was uh, uh, 36.48 in the, in the ES and target is 36.80 and Long story short, that that happened. That would, that all went through, and then went short the T notes there, and and they're they still haven't hit target, but they're getting close. And also posted the actual positions. And let's see. Oh, see that's what happens when you play with the Discord thing. Now, how do I get rid of this? There we go. So uh, so what happens is in the Discord thing, I. I Today, I described what I just told you guys about the four categories. And uh, what I do is in here, uh, I publish the the trades pretty much, uh, not in real time, but but close, okay, or ahead of time or something like that. Okay? And other people also post things in here. Um, and that's, uh, here are some of the people that, that that post things in here. And uh, he, Bright Yang, he, he posts a lot of uh, puts and calls and warrants and other fancy stuff. Um, and John likes to do his uh, SPY calls and puts and those fun things. So anyway, so we've got that here. So if you're interested in the San Diego Traders Group, uh, there's no charge to join that. And it's, uh, uh, what can I tell you? It's there and available. The uh, it's one of the Discord groups, and uh, eventually, if this gets if there's a lot of people in there that come in there to follow me, then I'll wind up splitting off and having a, a separate one for me. And uh, that's new. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at my list here as I look down. Oh, yeah. Well, let's do a little chart analysis and, and see if I can come up with something that you might find interesting on the charts. Yeah, okay, here we go. Now, this was this is an actual trade that happened. And, um, okay. Yeah, I'll show you the results so you know why it's worth paying attention to. Uh, let's see. Where was it? Where are the results? Hold on. Here we go. Snag it editor. Boom. Okay. Here's the results. So let's see. Can I get this guy to come down? Ah, you don't need it. You can see here. Here we uh, we have one position left on in the hogs today, and that's how much we have open open 585, and we closed out 2883, 28883. Okay, yeah, out of that. So we we had a total of six cars on in this. Okay, in the hogs. Now I'm going to show you the, the some of the logic behind it and what goes on. Okay, so what happened was this pattern here was in play. And as we got to this point here, anybody who's taken uh, this area here who's taken the Andrews course knows that right here, because of what this pattern in here, you have what's called a an EP, expanded pivot formation. So 
and and these are all over the darn place. Uh, I had one the other day in the bonds, and they were kind of neat. Uh, let's take a look in the bonds. Uh, there we go. Oh, yikes, what a mess. Let's get rid of this stuff. Let's see, can we see? I don't see it in this pattern here. So let's try Z, let's try ZB, CBC here. Ah, there it is, there it is, real pretty. Okay, so if you notice the same pattern here in the bonds that you have these two pivots, draw upsloping line there, and then you have three pivots in a row, downsloping line, real simple. It's called an expanded pivot formation. And what, what's interesting about EPs these are, these are known for being bottoms and tops of major moves. So, and, and now the next question you might ask, well, does that mean on hourly, on daily, on weekly? Yes. Remember, the market is fractal. So the answer is yes. And uh, so what happened was price was, this is some bonds. I bought some of these and took a quick ride up and, took a profit and uh, let's see. So we were looking at the HEs. Let's look at this. The Hoggies, Hoggies, where are you Hoggies? There we go. There's the Hoggies. So what happens is, is that when you have one of these, quite, it's not unusual for price to make it to the R1 line. So to get an R1 line, you simply draw a line, for, you draw what's called the 04, which go from here to here and beyond. It might look something like this here. Yeah, see, real pretty nice little line. Well, here's how you use thinkorswim to draw action reaction lines. You take this point here, take this point here, and you just make sure your, your center line here is on here. And this is your reaction line. And quite often prices go up to it and sometimes they'll reverse there. See how nicely they reversed here? Boom, down she went for weeks. Okay, and so what happened was Price came down here. Well, we know is that when we have this kind of pattern here, remember I said that quite often prices make a major pivot. So if this is a major, this guy's going to be going for a while, right? It's got some time to go in the other direction. Now, so when it came back down to here, I was very interested in buying and wound up buying a bunch. And then, and I had my intraday signal, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the OZ trade, which is my category A trades, right? And it's going down here. And then, you know, in a week later, it's down, down, down to here. Oh, the end of the week. Oh, finishes down here. Oh, not a good reason to cry because after all, you have one, two, three, four pivots on that line. That is a strong line when you have four pivots on one line. So... I mean, I had six positions on and up she went and uh, I took some of them off today, left one on, as you just saw. And um, and here we are. OK, so this this EP is a good thing to remember. Okay, this is expanded pivot formation. They happen all over the place. They're very interesting. And they're all they also can be somewhat tricky. So uh, keep your eye open for that, okay? And uh, otherwise, it's uh, the 15th of December in the year 2020. And wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, we will have something special for you in the way of a course offering that if you are interested, send me an email, ronjanish at gmail.com. And uh, we'll get you a good deal. Talk to you later. Bye.